was recorded over the weekend. Nigeria recalls second COVID-19 death as Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State tests positive. President Buhari's speech on COVID-19 enthuses Nigerians. Measures and palliatives described as appropriate. The armed forces of Nigeria is to implement all restrictions. Armed forces, states' readiness to enforce lockdown. Hello, welcome to the Network News with me, Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Reading with me tonight is Hengina John Adams in Lagos. Thanks for joining us. Nigeria has recorded a second death from the coronavirus pandemic. Minister of Health Dr. Osagi Ehanere confirmed this at a media briefing in Abuja by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Mitari Igben reports. With this briefing came an update the on the COVID-19 pandemic. Sadly, another fatality was recorded over the weekend in the person of a patient who had severe underlying illnesses. In addition to the well-known advisory, I am recommending that all families be aware that the, elder, the elderly among them are the most vulnerable and should be specially protected from needless contact with children and persons who could be positive for the coronavirus infection. The same should be said for all persons who are known to have underlying diseases such as tuberculosis, HIV, cancer. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, President Boss Mustafa, appealed to Nigerians to cooperate fully with the 24-hour lockdown in Abuja as well as Lagos and Ogun states, as announced by President Muhammadu Buhari. It's a total lockdown, except for essential services, except you are going to access specific needs like medical needs, except you're going out to buy food. Nothing would happen to us if we lock down for these two weeks and allow for the tracking of those that have been in contact with those infected. The task force said steps are already been taken to roll out the palliatives announced by Mr. President. Mr. President's speech on paragraph 54, he has also directed that the conditional cash uh, transfers uh, be given in advance uh, of two months. This we have also called the, the, uh, the program heads and we have directed that we start immediate payment of this cash, uh, cash transfer to the most poorest and vulnerable uh, households in our country. We have deployed about 7,000 of the registered environmental uh, professionals of Nigeria. They are already in the process of disinfecting uh, decontaminating advocacy uh, across the country. In the coming days, Nigeria hopes to expand its present capacity of six testing laboratories and 30,000 test kits to combat the coronavirus pandemic. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikwen, NTA News. Meanwhile, Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makinde has tested positive to the coronavirus. The governor in a tweet informed the public that the result of his test is positive and that he was an asymptomatic and will continue to self-isolate. In another development, a Boeing state governor, Dave Omohi, has gone into self-isolation to ascertain his status after possibly being exposed to persons that are likely positive to COVID-19. Adebola Brooks on Sunday is here with global update on the coronavirus pandemic. The third month that the coronavirus have been ravaging the entire world, a disease that began in China has now made the United States of America its throne, where the confirmed cases have risen to over 142,000 with 2,000 deaths and about 27,000 in critical condition. 
Italy is the worst hit by the virus, with over 97,000 confirmed cases, while over 3,000 people are in critical condition. Spain, which has over 80,000 confirmed cases, recorded over 537 deaths in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of deaths in the country to over 6,800, while over 4,000 are in critical condition. In the Middle East, Iran is on top of the table with over 38,000 confirmed cases, over 2,600 deaths, and over 3,200 are in critical condition. Africa appears to be the less affected continent with the coronavirus pandemic, which has affected 46 countries, over 4,600 cases, 146 deaths, 335 recoveries, and eight of them free from the virus. South Africa maintained the top of the table in the continent with over 1,200 cases, two deaths, and seven people in critical condition. Although Egypt has about half the confirmed cases in South Africa, but has the highest number of deaths in the continent with none in critical condition. Algeria is just below the ladder with 31 deaths, over 500 confirmed cases, with none in critical condition. Despite its grip of the world, the good news is that over 156,000 people have recovered from the virus worldwide, including Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's wife, Sophie Amadebola, Brooklyn Sunday. Reports just reaching out says that in Lagos, five persons who were earlier test, who earlier tested positive to the COVID-19 virus have been discharged by the Lagos state government. Nosa Isula has this update. Those who have been quarantined at the isolation center for weeks looked stable and unruffled. Although the discharged patients preferred anonymity. They expressed joy and satisfaction over the treatment they received. Speaking to the media, one of the patients told people not to panic as the virus could be defeated. While thanking Governor Babajide Sonwolu for his support and proactiveness, they pleaded that the workers at the center should be given life insurance. I came in here on the 15th, and after the test proved inconclusive, I was asked to come back the next day. And um, the next day, we were I was admitted alongside of the owners. Um, things turned out to be fine. We were taken care of by the official, the health officials on ground. And um, all our complaints were attended to. And now, I'm a living proof, a living witness alongside my other colleagues that we can beat it. We can beat it. And I want to assure others that this is not their problem. This is not their resting place. Because from the second day I came here, there was improvement up to this moment. So, uh, thank you guys. It would be recalled that Governor Babajide Songwulu had earlier in the broadcast said that some patients who previously tested positive would be released if their confirmatory tests are negative. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. Less than two hours from now, the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Lagos and Ogun states will be on lockdown in line with the presidential directives aimed at containing the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. To ensure that the federal government's initiative on social investments programs are sustained during the lockdown, Ruth Aguale examines the task before the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. I've instructed the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. I have directed that the conditional cash transfers for the next two months be paid immediately. Our internally displaced persons will also receive two months of food rations in the coming weeks. A presidential assignment put in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development at the Center for Onward Delivery. Though urgent, but for the minister, that is the essence of the ministry. The president has directed that we should deploy uh, food materials uh, to these uh, three affected uh, locations, Lagos, Ogun, and the FCT. I have directed DG NEMA uh, to start the deployment of these uh, food 
my serious uh, to these uh, locations. The conditional cash transfer, which Mr. President has also directed that we should uh, pay two months uh, in advance. That we are working uh, with the program coordinator to see that uh, we effectively carry out that uh, directive. The three months repayment moratorium for the trader money, market money and farmers money is the tax before the ministry and files to that effect already going through administrative check. In sustaining the school feeding program of the federal government and reaching out to internally displaced persons, efforts are already in place by the ministry to expand interventions for an effective response across the country. Uh, now we have deployed uh, food ration for the period of two months to this IDP, official IDP camps, and we're expanding our intervention to even the unofficial uh, IDP camps to, to make sure that we give them these two months uh, food ration. The issue of the school feeding program, we are working uh, with the program head to see how we liaise with the state governments, and we have to uh, reach out to them and uh, through their homes to see that we give them uh, this uh, food ration. As the lockdown commences in parts of the country, the minister emphasized that the ministry is open to partnership with non-governmental organizations to sustain livelihood. In Abuja, Ruth Aguale, NTN News. We now join Doyen Dia in one of the supermarkets in Abuja with an on-the-spot assessment. Doyen, if you can hear me, what is the ambience and situation like where you are? Can you hear me? Doyen, what is the situation like and what's the ambience where you are? Yes, sir. Don't you come on? Can you hear me? What's the situation like where you are? Uh, we apologize for that loss in the uh, audio quality of that uh, live uh, input we intended to bring you. But uh, joining me in the studio is uh, a legal practitioner, Kayode Ajulo, to talk more on the presidential broadcast on COVID-19. The broadcast that happened last night appeared to have calmed the nerves and uh, appeared to have also even solved some issues that a lot of people were uh, apprehensive about. What is your take? How did you see the address? Well, let me start that I suspected uh, the, the broadcast that the president, the presidential, is like a, a statement that he is and try to give like a report card of what I have done, that is what my government has done for the time being from the day it has happened and you can see. And I think this is what should be expected because yeah, like you said, Nigerians are eager to learn from their leader, Nigerian leader to, eager to learn from their president and that is exactly what it is. I think one need to really commend them about that, at least it gives some hope. It curves some nerves, really, and you can see you can see the way everybody so eager, so ready, and watch him with rapt attention. And I must say, to some point, he give, try to give hopes, and you know where it comes from. The essence that the president is not in Nigeria, the president is sick, somebody is. But you can see, it's stand true, it's too true out for that broadcast. That is just to show. I think it is more of symbolism, with symbolism of it, and the way he tried to use the little few minutes to show this this is what it is i'm okay i'm with you now what of the insinuations from some quarters that the president lacks powers to restrict the citizens movements in uh, situations like this wouldn't you say public safety overrides any other consideration no it's so clear i think our constitution takes care of, takes care of all this Yes, some people may say because you can't restrict movement that based on the fundamental fundamental rights provision that is especially particularly in chapter four. But at the end of that chapter, mm. chapter forty five really explained where you you can derogate from all that section. And that is really clearly states where you can derogate. Can you briefly tell us chapter four? And that, that's chapter right from 45. the chapter that, that chapter it talked about public safety. That is even the subsection A of that. Talked about sub public safety and particularly. And secondly, B talked about in the situation where you are trying to even enforce some other form for the of other human rights. And that is why you see the two subsections two 
of that particular section now goes to the issue of state of emergency. So that one really explained that when some people were saying it has to be with the state of emergency before the president can review. You don't need to do that. That is why there is a, there is a divide between what the first one is when it comes to safety, public safety, for, for health hazard and all that. That is A. Then the B talked about so defending So Mr. President, in that situation can override of course, the issue of going to the National Assembly and all It can override and apart from that, that section is even make reference to other legislation that other legislation can take care of it. As it is, the situation where we are, I know many people I can really understand their thinking and their, their sentiments that night, they are present into the class of emergency, but I believe that is an overkill. It's even ridiculous. The issue we have today is a loan issue that is an issue, and we the WHO, that's what the World Health Organization, has declared as pandemic. And as it is, I think the president need not to overheat the, 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 the polity by saying, under the under the heart, that's quarantine height. This is what this is what I'm doing. And I've, I've, I've rescued. Though I may add more that, and I believe after the president must have done that, the attorney general must have been doing the Does rest. Does the general have quarantine laws? Certainly. We have quarantine law of 19, 1926. The law has been there. Does it and apply the law, now? The law situation? still applies. The law still applies. That's why I said that section 45 even incorporate that law. That is why I said that nothing shall restrict any other law from taking being into force to, to, to take to take care of that. And that is why the, the quarantine law even make more more than the president under the give gives the president power to make regulation regulation. Though I'm waiting for that regulation and I believe the Attorney General is is, is working on that reg regulation. Uh, Mr. Kaido Ajulo, thank you so much for your insights and uh, your assessment of the presidential broadcast on COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you. We now go back to Doyin Dia, who is in one of the supermarkets in Abuja, for an on-the-spot assessment. Oh, we'll take uh, this story first before going back to doing there. In the meantime, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakar Malemi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, has further cleared the air on the proclamation by President Muhammad Buhari restricting movements on account of COVID-19. The Attorney General, who was responding to the criticism by Mr. Olu Adeboru, SAN, explained that the declaration by the President is valid, legal, and enforceable. Mr. Malami said the step taken by President Buhari is not only patriotic, but in overriding national interest that is erroneously being subjected to attack for allegedly being illegal. Ebu Olu Adeborua, SAN, had claimed that the president lacked the powers to restrict movements in any part of the country without the consent of the National Assembly. But Abu Bakr Malami noted that the president did not make a declaration of state of emergency under section 305 subsection 1 of the 1999 constitution as amended, which will have required the concurrence of both houses of the National Assembly. He further affirmed that section 305 subsection 6 and subsection B of the 1999 constitution as amended permits a proclamation of a state of emergency to run for a period of 10 days without the approval of the National Assembly when the parliament is not in session, as in the present situation, where in the National Assembly has shut down. The president, Mr. Malami, said, sought to address the broadcast, a public emergency occasioned by a dangerous and infectious coronavirus disease. The restriction of movement came on the heels of advice received from the Federal Minister of Health and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC making the order a part of national quarantine measure. Back now to Doin Dia, who is in one of the supermarkets in Abuja with an on-the-spot assessment. Doin, if you can hear me now, what is the ambience and situation like where you are? Yeah, thank you, Kudu. We are here at the Sahar stores in Garuki Area 11, and this is one of the stores in the Federal Capital Territory that usually have every turnout of uh, shoppers. And this night we've seen uh, the large turnout uh, of, of people coming to do last shopping uh, in preparation for these 14 days lockdown, which is going to commence at exactly 11 p.m. tonight. Uh, we spoke earlier with uh, some of the cross-section of Nigerians who are uh, 
making their last shopping here and of course they said since they don't know how it's going to be they just have to ensure that they stock the house even though they've made uh, shoppings earlier and I have one of um, uh, the staffs the officials of Sahar store here uh, can you tell us your name my name is Sharif Ahmad Moy okay can you tell us how has it been so far yeah the situation here in Sahar stores is is uh, chaos due to the population of customer we have there was uh, since about four days now the, we have a lot a large turn out of customers because of the situation in the country of this coronavirus and then the information given by the man, uh, government yesterday make people to you know feed up the place which the situation is somehow manageable uh, unmanageable here with us okay what items are they buying more the item they are buying is full stops really with this full stop everything is full stop because of the situation they don't know the situation will be at home if they are since the player have been locked down the whole uh, uh, fct have been locked down so they are thinking of the condition it, it will be at home so they are shopping full stop to stock their house. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, one interesting thing about this development is that this is actually the first time that Nigerians are going to be experiencing this kind of lockdown. And as it is, nobody can actually explain what lies ahead. But uh, from what the people I spoke with earlier told me is the fact that they actually support all the measures put in place by the federal government of Nigeria and of course they express confidence in the president and commander-in-chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, President Muhammadu Buhari, especially on his nationwide broadcast with all the assurances given and the palliative measures to ensure that even as the government locked down the old some parts of uh, the country to ensure that it controls the further outbreaks of this uh, COVID-19, that at least Nigerians have all it takes to uh, cope with the development. Doing very quickly, did you notice Please. any panic buying and what will you say of the security situation as we move to the countdown on uh, to 11 p.m., the beginning of the lockdown? Okay, thank you, Doni. And uh, report just reaching us says 20 new cases of COVID-19 have been reported in Nigeria. 13 in Lagos, four in the Federal Capital Territory, two in Kaduna, and one in Oyo State. As at 9 p.m. 30th March, there are 131 confirmed cases of COVID-19 reported in Nigeria with two deaths. President Mohamed Buhari has assured Nigerians that all funds donated to fight the coronavirus will be properly utilized for its purpose and also to reposition Nigeria's health care system. President Mohamed Buhari acknowledged with appreciation the kind gesture of captains of industries, corporate entities, missionaries, musical artists, and individuals who have consistently supported the ongoing efforts to mitigate COVID-19 pandemic. The president also expressed gratitude to a group of oil companies who partnered with the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation to donate $30 million. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president, media and publicity, Karba Sheo, noted that all the supporters include the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Ashua Jubola Metinumbu, Dr. Mike Adenuga Jr., Mudupeola and Folon Shua Laikija of Famfa Oil, and Dr. Emeka Ofo, who joined a list of all the public spirited Nigerians in contributing health and educational facilities in the bid to contain the virus. All the contributors include Zenit Bank PLC, Keystone Bank, First Bank PLC, and senior pastor of Dunamis International Gospel Center, Dr. Paul Enneche and his wife, and Stallion Empowerment Initiative of the Stallion Group, while urging Nigerians to follow all the guidelines provided by the Ministry of Health, states governments and National Center for Disease Control, 
the president enjoined all intending donors to channel their contributions through the presidential tax force for the control of the novel coronavirus in Abuja doing dear it news time now for some messages the news continues after this time out stay with us of our planet. The Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Algon, advise to stay safe and guide yourself with the right information. Avoid contact with sick persons. Ensure you wash your hands with water and soap or apply alcohol-based hand sanitizer always. Practice social distancing with no more than 20 persons if you are coughing and sneezing frequently. Please stay away from people and contact health officials for further examinations and treatments. The virus spreads easily when you touch infected materials fabrics, wooden surfaces, and even metals. So avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with your unwashed hands. To protect our world from COVID-19, it's our collective responsibility. Our gun says, stay safe, stay home. This message is from Barrister Alabi Kowadi David, President Association of Local Governments of Nigeria. For and on behalf of the 774 local governments in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Shola, Shola, Come on, help me. You need to learn. But I'm more interested in drawing. How are you going to be part of the business if you don't learn? You just don't understand. Morning. Anyone for some Lipton? The rich taste of Lipton awakens body and mind. Let me have a look at your drawings. Son, these designs are amazing. Lipton Yellow Label Tea. Awaken to what really matters. And Kara shopping with hey, the bad that one no fine. You know, nice no, it's too dull. Oh. This one. Oh wow, this it's beautiful. beautiful. Omo, this fabric. It's gonna fade though. Yeah. Look, make I tell you something. The new area Ankara, it go take good care of it. Ah. No fine. All right. <laughs> Not lie. <laughs> Not true. But the price cheap, cheap. Try new area along Ankara and colors now. In our nation, drive to boost its economic base through non-oil export. Smedan has taken the challenge of industrializing our nation through a program called OLOB. OLOB is a program which identifies a product in a local government that has competitive and comparative advantage. And the aim of the program is to reach the 774 local governments and help the nation to industrialize. With the support of the federal government, Smedan was able to reach 218 local governments in our country by providing the cooperative group training, workspace, equipment, and working capital. We call on all the critical stakeholders in MSME ecosystem as well as the international development partners to join us in our vision to transform the economy of this country under the transformation agenda of Mr. President in Smeda. Think big and start small. Introducing the new Nevia Dry Impact and Dry Comfort Deodorant. Now with quick dry effect and longer lasting fragrance. Guaranteed to keep you feeling dry and fresh all day. Proven 48-hour protection and longer-lasting fragrance from Nivea. Never get caught on fresh with the new Nivea Dry Fresh deodorants. The coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, is spreading at an alarming rate all over the globe, including Nigeria. 
With the number of infected persons in Nigeria increasing daily, prevention is better than cure. Coronavirus has no cure. The virus spreads from one person who affects two persons. And by the time the affected person is isolated, the two persons have affected four and it keeps spreading. You must take preventive measures to save yourself and that of the people around you. Always wash your hands with soap and water. Put distance between yourself and others. Whenever you cough or sneeze, cover your mouth. Clean and disinfect surfaces. Stay at home if you're sick and contact the proper authorities. Together, we can cut down the spread of the coronavirus. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest TV network. Thank you for remaining with the Network News. More groups react to the presidential broadcast on measures to contain coronavirus pandemic. Ruth Aguele compiled the report. Although anxiousness and boredom characterize the shutting down of most activities, the people of neighboring Nasara states to the FCT have expressed confidence in the initiative rolled out by the federal government to prevent escalation of coronavirus pandemic in the country as contained in the presidential broadcast. Because at a time like this, it's very important for leaders worldwide to come out and, of course, let the people know the true situation and what they are doing about it. If I is one thing to release money, it's another thing. Proper monitoring of the fund released must actually be done to ensure that it is, it is used for the purpose for which it is meant. Meanwhile, the Buhari Media Organization has called on Nigerians to have faith in the present administration as a great number of projects have been lined up to address the challenges occasioned by the coronavirus pandemic and effort to contain its further spread. In a statement by its chairman, Ni Akinshiju, the government has rolled out additional measures, including restructuring of the social investment programs, control of the fast-growing personnel costs by efficiency measures, provision of fiscal relief for taxpayers and key economic sectors, and tax holidays. The group stated that the decision in locking down Irish states is a global trend and urged Nigerians to ignore biased criticism of the Buhari administration in its efforts to, to stop the spread of the coronavirus, especially by opposition. Meanwhile, the minority caucus in the Senate has commended federal government's approach towards combating the ravaging COVID-19 virus as contained in President Muhammad Buhari's broadcast to Nigerians. In a statement by the Senate minority leader, Senator Yinaya Baribe, the caucus is ready to work and engage in a bipartisan manner with the presidency and is even ready to reconvene should the need arise to ensure that the country what of the COVID-19 virus. That was Doyen Dia, not Ruth Aguele, as we earlier announced. Still on the coronavirus pandemic, as states step up measures to curb the spread of COVID-19, correspondents examine the level of compliance by Nigerians across the country. Linda Okore Igwe has the report. In Abuja, Abdullah Suleiman Yaji reports that residents of the Federal Capital Territory living in the suburbs are making efforts to comply with the stay home and the social distancing. In Makrudi, Bim Hanya reports that in an effort to curtail the spread of COVID-19, Benue State Government has imposed ducks to dawn curfew that takes effect today, Monday, the 30th of March, while Wednesday all entry points into the state will be closed. From Oshobo correspondent Joshua Ogunjide says, Oshun State has commenced full screening of all travelers across her boundaries with neighboring states. The story from Onicha, a number of states, is not different, as Ekene Ndulwe reports that a number of state government has closed the Niger Bridge to all vehicles except those conveying petroleum, agricultural and other essential products. Also in Delta State, Ogotuku Kaona reports that the state government has closed her boundaries with neighboring states in the fight against the spread of COVID-19. 
in Abuja, Linda Okori Igwe, NTN News. The Nigerian military says it will enforce the stay-at-home order issued by President Muhammadu Buhari to curb the spread of COVID-19 in Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. This was announced by the Coordinator Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, in a news conference in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has the report. The military, a versatile multi-sectoral agency, has been active, playing complementary roles in the global drive to curb the spread of COVID-19. In Nigeria, under its non-kinetic program, it provides 17 medical facilities spread in six geopolitical zones and recalling retired medical personnel to support the management of people infected with the virus. We shall continue planning. For now, following President Muhammadu Buhari's stay-at-home order for residents of Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, as from 11 p.m. 30th March, the military is set to enforce the restriction of movement. The armed forces of Nigeria is to implement all restriction on movement in line with the federal government of Nigeria. Meanwhile, as part of its corporate social responsibility, Mutual Commitment Company, a Chinese firm based in Nigeria, has donated COVID-19 protective kits comprising face masks and hand gloves to the defense headquarters Abuja for the safety of Nigerian troops. China and Nigeria are brother countries who are united as one family. So a uh, problem happens here, it's just the same thing like a problem to our own self. The company has made similar presentation to the Nigerian Television Authority in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. The traditional rulers are offering words of advice to their subjects and providing some essentials as measures to towards addressing the hardship as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's the report. Kaduna State is first state to lock down as a measure to fight the coronavirus and traditional rulers are placed with the step taken and called on their subjects to see it as a solidarity for all. I am appealing to all of you to maintain personal and environmental hygiene, abide by rules and regulations, and avoid large gatherings. I call on people to stay at home and obey expert advice. Well, the package I have is to appeal to our people, especially in the southern part of this state, to obey the government. If the government says there is curfew, then there is curfew. We have to obey. In Jigawa State, the Duse Emirate distributed materials worth 283 million naira to the 28 districts. The distribution, which was done in separate locations, is in line with the federal government directive of banning large gatherings. Uh, Islam is one of the best source of social security uh, that is obtained in the history of this world. Like him in his ability to keep what they give to him and uh, his ability to give it out to the people that are supposed to take this kind of uh, the cut. This was really commended by the beneficiaries in Abuja, Doi, Dia, and the news. Countdown to the lockdown of the Federal Capital Territory now is in hours and not in days. But will petrol stations be opened during this period? Let's get some clarifications. Abuja is city in its last moments to lockdown. All racing to get what can sustain them for fortnight. But the vehicles doing the racing need not to worry because the filling stations will be open during the lockdown. But the owners are afraid, so the queues are emerging, while some not dispensing. I'm not aware that the filling stations will be open tomorrow. I don't know, I don't know about it. The filling stations will be open. That is why they say my organization we should be coming to work to supervise to attend them for all those exercises so that we can be able to give it to public. Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, is out on the field. One, to allay the fears, and secondly, to ensure no order of the product. So, close check on the manifest and physical monitoring 
of the underground content. The retail outlet is supposed to be opened. So that's why we are out here today to make sure that uh, all the stations are opened. Unreliable electricity compels many to get petrol for their generating sets. Since there is no movement, you have to buy for the generators and the cars so that you you'll be able to sustain yourself for the period. But the presence of DPR keeps some wedded to their own jerry cans because DPR frowns at it. Filling station owners, they should desist from selling to a jerry can. Quite a lot of discomfort, but it's a price to pay for the eradication of COVID-19 by all. Mie Ogede, NT News. Following the lockdown directive by President Muhammad Buhari, the co-marshal Federal Road Safety Co. Boboye Oyeyemi has ordered the shutdown of driver's license database in Abuja with immediate effect, in line with the president's directives to lockdown. Expectedly, the driver's license center will not be able to process licenses for applicants nationwide. However, applicants can go via the bypass mode to process for the license to be delivered after the lockdown period. A statement by the co-public education officer, B.C. Kazim, announced that the shutdown is aimed at sustaining existing endeavors already in place by the federal government to curtail further spread of the COVID-19. This disclosure will not affect the operational formations of the co as operatives have been deployed to render required essential services in collaboration with other security and intelligence agencies at all levels to enforce both the presidential and state government's directives. When I take you to Lagos for more updates on COVID-19 and other stories with Hengido in Lagos. Hello Hengido, how is it there? Kudu. A faith-based organization, Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, has donated essential medical supplies to the Lagos State Government. The Assistant General of ASEA, Administration and Personnel of the Church, Pastor Johnson Odeshola, who presented the medical supplies at the Isolation Center, Menland Hospital Yaba, said it is to support the efforts of the Lagos State Government in equipping the medical facility and personnel with necessary protective gear as they work to contain COVID-19 pandemic. Ken Edbelugi reports. It is no longer news that COVID-19 is ravaging the world. What is, however, of concern is how the leaders of nations are battling to contain the virus. In Nigeria, government at all levels, individuals and corporate organizations are pulling resources together to combat the pandemic. One of such organizations is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, which has lent its support to those in the front lines of the pandemic. The items donated are 200,000 hand gloves, 8,000 hand sanitizers, and 8,000 surgical face masks. In order for us also to join force to be able to fight, to fight this uh, pandemic, that's why we have uh, been able to do this. Within us, as, a, as an organization, we have made arrangements according to our sector to be able to give back to our member in various houses setting. Because each family represents a house setting. Give them something, some food, especially this time that many of Majority has to stay home. It was near to Nigeria that we are united. We are all united to fight against the COVID-19 outbreak. We don't want it to continue in our own country. We want to get rid of it. We want to contain it so that everyone will be back to our normal activity. The Redeemed Christian Church of God through its medical unit has built healthcare centers across the country. The latest are the three intensive care units in three states of the Federation. They are in Lagos, Ogu, and Plato states. The church says it is committed to enhancing the Nigerian health care system. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. That's it from Lagos. We now take a break. The news continues with Kudu in Abuja. Chivita, the home of your trusted juice and refreshment brand in Nigeria, comes another first. Introducing the new cool Chivita in can. Enjoy the same great taste. So sad. You're feeling blue because you got nothing to do. You need to step up to the next
to the Max deal. Get Go TV Max for less this month. Go TV, live it, love it. I think she's got the hearts for me. I think she likes me. Uh-uh, I don't now. think so. Cut it out. That's my girlfriend. Guys, I'm out. Sweet boy, come and go. I'm all yours. Ooh. Woo-hoo! So tasty. How's it going in there? Pretty cozy. <laughs> Mini-Me tastes the fun. <laughs> Uh, that channel where you be watch just now don't work, huh? No panic. Can you see me? No panic. You go do it by yourself like ABC. Oh yeah, press the menu button on top of your remote. Scroll up and down till you see information central. Then press OK. Mm, press OK. Check the signal strength and quality. If the signal strength and quality pass 70, make you press the exit button, go back. Go advanced options, then choose installation, then go to reset and press OK. Yeah, press OK. Yeah. Wow, now you say fit catch all those channels with the one miss rule by yourself. <laughs> yes, make your groove for no loss. You see, as I do, I'm a bit. Huh? And I see, as I do, I'm. Go TV, live it, love it. <laughs> and I see, as we do, I'm. Nigerians, coronavirus is dangerous. It can kill. When you see this sign, high fever, cough, shortness of breath, drowsiness, pneumonia, don't panic, don't hide, don't embark in self-medication. Promptly visit the nearest medical facility. Report all cases to the nearest hospital. Prevention is key. Avoid contact with infected persons. Avoid crowded areas as much as possible. Wash your hands regularly. Use hand sanitizers. Your life is precious. Stay alive. Live long, live right. This message is sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture and the Nigerian Film Corporation. Nigerian Film Corporation, powering possibility. Back to the studio in Abuja. Skeletal operations in the financial system to be available despite announcement of a lockdown in Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. Muplan Dakon has joined me to, with details of this on Business News. Thank you very much, Kudu. On Business News, Nigerians have been assured that they can still perform online transactions and use ATM machines while observing the restrictions imposed by government occasioned by the coronavirus pandemic. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Ahmed Zainab, and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile, in a joint statement say they have obtained exemptions from the president for all affected stakeholders to allow very skeletal operations in the financial system and money markets to keep the system in light operations during this time. They urge relevant staff of affected outfits to wait for further instructions and urge Nigerians to be patient, cooperative and united as all hands are on deck to defeat the virus. And stocks were in the red this Monday as the Nigerian stock market adjusts to recent developments concerning the coronavirus pandemic. The equities market closed today on a negative note as investors lost 276.7 billion naira. The All Share Index depreciated by minus 2.43% to close at 21,330.79 basis points. Market turnover, however, closed positive as volume moved up by plus 85.71% as against plus 46.03% recorded in the previous session. Mobile led 11 gainers as against 15 losers topped by MTN Nigeria at the end of the day's session. Maya, Champion and Zenith Bank were the most active to boost market turnover, while Zenith Bank and Guarantee topped market value list. Meanwhile, the prices of oil has fallen back to 18-year low, below $20 per barrel. Most of the world is on lockdown as the coronavirus pandemic rages on. Demand on oil has fallen off a cliff. People are not traveling and businesses are slow. 
International benchmark crude oil fell 9.6% to trade at $22.54 per barrel, a price which was last seen in 2002. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude dropped 5.1% to trade at $20.40 per barrel. Given the heat to both supply and demand, analysts are projecting that prices will fall steeper in the coming weeks. And that's it on business news. We now join Mina for the next set of reports in Enugu. Hello, Mina. Hello, Maplang. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. In fulfillment of his promise to curtail the spread of coronavirus in Abia State, Governor Okeze Ibazo has equipped one of the isolation centers in Amachara General Hospital, Umaya, with medical facilities to avert the spread of the scorch. Chinyere Kuli reports. Facilities in the center include testing kids room, extra, dolphin room, five-bedded isolation wards, each for males and females, ventilators, consulting room, and a room housing 7,000 personal protective equipment, among others. The Commissioner for Health, Dr. Joe Osuji, who conducted journalists around the center, noted that the state government also made provision for 100 bed dead extension in case of spillover, which has extra 2,500 personal protective equipment, PPE, stressing that an attempt made to procure testing kits was restricted by the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC, who confirmed that 99% of testing kits in circulation today are fake. This is the level of preparedness we have for this state and for this uh, infection, should it come into our state. But for now, we don't have any case. The Commissioner for Information, John Oki Kalo, disclosed that personal protective equipment produced in Aba have been delivered to the state, while the Commissioner for Health will soon ascertain its fitness for use. Governor Bazu, in a recent broadcast to the people and residents of Abia State, assured that the lives and well being of Abians remain his priority. In Umwaha Chinere Okoli, NTA News. And that's a bit from Enugu over now to Mohammed in Abuja for a continuation of the news. Thank you, Bida. The Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu, has composed a special investigation team to unravel the immediate and remote causes of the unfortunate tragic explosion that occurred at the Ogbese Igbese near Akure, the Ondo State Capital, on Friday, the 27th of March, 2020. The team is headed by the Commissioner of Police in charge of the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit, Force Headquarters Abuja, Commissioner of Police Mike Kodishehu. The team will work with experts from the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency. A statement by the Force Public Relations Officer says, Frank Gumba says the IGP enjoins citizens, especially those living around the scene of the incident, to avoid the scene of the explosion so as not to tamper with ongoing investigations. The IGP also sympathizes with the victims. Our last protocol is Sakwato and Musa Abubakar is our guide. Welcome to Sokoto. Sokoto State Task Force Committee on COVID-19 has commenced the distribution of personal protective wares to health facilities in the state. Chair Mohammed Detti reports that the committee chairman, Dr. Mohammed Ali Nami, while flagging off the distribution, said it is part of the effort to curtail the spread of COVID-19 in the state. The report. Though no case of COVID-19 was recorded in Sokoto State, efforts are being intensified at prevention. Personal protective equipment that include full gowns, goggles, hand gloves, and disposable bags were among items distributed. The items are to be used by health personnel while dealing with suspected or infected patients of COVID-19. As part of its contribution to curtail the spread of coronavirus, Pharmaceutical Council of Nigeria, Sokoto State Chapter, presented cartons of hand sanitizers to the tax force committee. And we wish that uh, uh, this uh, support will benefit uh, those that are uh, needing the support. At a panel to update journalists on BVF issue, Chief Medical Director Mani Mabacha Women and Children Hospital gave an overview of the BVF, which he said is on an increase. 
In 2019, 445 cases were handled by the hospital, out of which 423 were operated on, with another set of over 200 routinely prepared. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Deti, NTA News. Well, that's it from here. NTA News continues after the break. Proactive measures in the containment of COVID-19 in Nigeria. The whole instruments of government are now mobilized to confront what has now become both a health emergency and an economic crisis. This week on NTA Tuesday Live, assessing the national response on COVID-19 for those who should know. NTA Tuesday Live at 10.30 p.m. Incisive and informative. Don't miss it. Your information, they important, just like your identity. Now, the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You feel change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why Go TV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel! <laughs> Any time for my phone is that why? Because now my correct phone number they for book. Ah. <laughs> Go TV. Live it. Love it. Report just reached us says President Muhammad Buhari has signed into law the COVID-19 regulations 2020. In the exercise of the powers confirmed on him by sections 2, 3, and 4 of the Quarantine Act, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and all other powers enabling him in that behalf, President Muhammad Buhari Monday signed the COVID-19 regulations 2020, which declared COVID-19 a dangerous infectious disease. The regulations effective March 20, 30th, 2020, also gave legal backing to the various measures outlined in the President's national broadcast on March 29th, 2020, such as restriction, cessation of movement in Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, and others towards containing the spread of the pandemic in the country. We will bring you details of these regulations in our subsequent bulletin. That concludes Network News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Muhammad Kudaw Bakar. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.